I'm gonna start this video with two words. Spoiler alert. Hey bookworms, welcome back to another best five worst five videos and today I'm going to talk about my favorite and least favorite book plot twists. Yes, those surprising revelations that are supposed to shock us and completely turn around the way we see a character or an event and sometimes they're really really great but sometimes not so much. Obviously I will be talking about plot twists but also plot points so obviously spoiler alert is in order, duh. And I have a feeling that this video is going to be pretty long so let's just get right into it and we'll go and start with the worst five book plot twists. Those plot twists that, that were either uh, really really obvious, didn't make any sense or just plain dumb. And my lists are never in any particular order but I will start with the most uncontroversial one and at number one we have the plot twist that Taylor Durden and the narrator are the same person from, you guessed it, Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. Now I can write an entire book about everything's wrong with this pretentious, obnoxious book but I don't have two hours right now so I'll just stick to this famous plot twist. People really really love this plot twist and it's a perfect example to just because it makes sense in one scene does not mean that it makes sense in the entire book. There are millions of examples to why this twist doesn't actually make any sense but once again I don't have two hours right now so I'll just give you two examples out of many to why it doesn't make sense. Example number one, Marla Singer, the girl who Tyler slash the narrator are sleeping with. So one of the personalities want to sleep with Marla, the other one hates her, doesn't want anything to do with her and she doesn't notice that something is weird. Yes, the relationship is mostly sexual and not emotional and yes, she's also a bit crazy so obviously she won't notice the little things. But come on, one guy wants to sleep with her two hours later, he doesn't want anything to do with her and not once she says something like Tyler, what happened? Uh, two hours ago you wanted me and then the narrator would notice something like that. Obviously, once he does find out that he's Tyler Durden, she calls him Tyler all the time. What a coincidence! But during their other, let's call it, relationship, she doesn't say anything that would reveal the fact that he himself is in fact Tyler. Example number two is Fight Club slash Project Mayhem. Tyler surrounds himself with people who are super devoted to him, who are willing to kill, to die, to go to jail for him. This thing doesn't happen in two days. He recruits these people, he inspires them. You want to tell me that none of these people notice that this one person has like two different personalities? And once again, when an narrator goes around and asks, where's Taylor? Where's Taylor? Have you seen Taylor? Nobody tells him, dude, what the hell are you talking about? You're Taylor. Also, no person seemed to say, hmm, I think this person is a bit wacko. Maybe we shouldn't go after him so devotingly. And once again, after he finds out that he himself is Taylor Durden, everybody refers to him as Mr. Durden. What a coincidence. Let's just move on and at number two we have the fact that the mother has been dead all along from The Truth About the Harry Kaber Affair by Joel Dicker. This is actually a book that I really really like but this plot twist doesn't make a lot of sense. The Truth About the Harry Kaber Affair is about an author called Marcus Goldman who tries to solve a 30 year old um, murder of a girl called Nola Clarigan, mostly in order to prove the innocence of his best friend who is currently being accused of the murder and he also cooperates with the actual police detective who is in charge of the investigation, Detective Perry Galahawood, 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 Sir Galahad, let's just call him Perry. This book is filled with twists and turns and in one of them Perry and Marcus find out that Nola has been abused for years by her own mother. She would beat her up, drown her, really terrible things. But then in even a twistier twist they find out that the mother has been dead ever since Nola was a very small child and only continues to live in family photos and in Nola's head because she is a little... Wow, this is such an amazing twist, although hmm, when you think about it, it doesn't make any sense. First of all, this isn't Psycho. No one tries to hide the fact that the mother is dead and this is a very small town where everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows Nola and her father because he was the only one who was raising her. You want to tell me that this entire time when Marcus was going around, talking to people, interviewing them, no one even mentioned the fact that Nola was raised by a single father, especially after they started suspecting that the mother was abusing her? Didn't he ask people about Nola's relationship with her mother? Didn't it ever come up? That does not make any sense. 
But if that's not enough in order to convince you, just think about the fact that Marcus was cooperating with Perry, who is an actual police detective, maybe FBI, I don't remember. He must be the worst detective in this entire world if he didn't know that the mother was dead. I mean, you're investigating the murder of a 15-year-old girl. Isn't the first thing that you're looking at is her family and her life at her house? So, no guys, I'm sorry, this book is really great, but this twist does not make any sense. Sticking on the subject of mothers, in number three, we have the fact that the mother was both insane and a witness to a crime from The Farm by Tom Rob Smith. The farm is mostly told from a first-person point of view of a woman tells her story of how she escaped the small Swedish town where she and her husband were spending their retirement. She did that because she saw something she shouldn't. She found out something about her husband. Apparently he's a bad guy. He committed a crime and she was afraid for her life. So she ran off back to England to her son and she tells him her story. But all the while her husband also contacted the son and told him that she had some sort of a mental breakdown. She imagined things, she's sick, she needs to see a doctor, none of the things that she's saying is true and it's up to us, the son and let's face it, the police to try and find out which version is the actual truth. This is all pretty cool but then at the end we find out that both versions are kind of both right and wrong. Apparently she did see something but she misinterpreted it because apparently she had some sort of a traumatic childhood experience that she emotionally blocked and when she saw the other things, she kind of connected it with what she experienced as a child. And to cut a long story short, both versions are both true and false. There are actually two reasons why this book made this part of the list. The first one is that it's so predictable. I did a review on the farm if you want more information, but I think somewhere toward the middle of the book, I knew exactly how it's going to end. So it's supposed to be thriller, no thrills. The second reason is that I understand that Tom Rob Smith decided to do something a little unique and wanted to create like a third solution, but instead of creating something new and surprising, it felt as if it was just trying to create a solution that would please everyone. And that was simply not a good solution, not a very good book. Sorry, Tom Rob Smith, but yeah. Moving on to an actual non-thriller at number four, we have the fact that Loki is Loki, from American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Prior to reading this book, all I knew about it that it has something to do with gods from different panians. And indeed, this book is about a man called Shadow, who, to cut a long story short, finds out that different gods from different panians exist in real life. And right at the beginning, we find out that Shadow's cellmate is a man nicknamed Loki Smith. Hold on, that sounds a little familiar. Could he be somehow related to the god Loki? And somewhere toward the ending of the book, we found out that this man that we know as Loki is actually, hey, Thor's brother, Odin's son, the god Loki. I would never have thought. Yes, as you can probably imagine, this twist is in this list because it's just way too obvious, but a good word toward American Gods. It's a pretty cool novel. And maybe since it's not a thriller and it's not the big plot twist at the end, you know, who the killer is, it's not such a big deal. But I think, you know, Neil Gaiman is such a wonderful author. He could have done better. And at number five, we have the twist of the husband is a big fat liar from The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Hey, look, another book that I've reviewed. You can go and check it out. The link is uh, down below and I'm not shamelessly publishing myself. Hmm. Anyway, the protagonist of The Girl on the Plane is Rachel, who has an ex-husband. I should have said ex-husband instead of husband, but he remarried, so he's a husband. Anyway, her ex-husband Tom is a big fat liar right from the start and we're supposed to be surprised when he is even a bigger, fatter, more asshole of a liar later. Pretty much from the start we find out that he cheated on her with a woman he just met. So he cheats on her, kicks her from the house that she planned to live with him, live there with his concubine and their love child and I mean, we're supposed to believe he's a good guy? There's nothing about his personality that will make us think, oh no, he wouldn't do that to Rachel. I mean, the man is practically the biggest asshole that a person can be without actually doing something illegal because unfortunately cheating isn't illegal. I mean, Rachel has memories that are different from what Tom told her that really happened. I mean, I don't know, is there a possibility that perhaps he lied 
No, he wouldn't do that. I mean, seriously, guys, if you read the book, tell me, were you surprised to find out that Tom lied about other things as well? This book could have been really cool. Unfortunately, one of the faults is that it's completely predictable and I saw Tom lies coming a mile away and he's one of those characters that you think immediately, don't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. Okay, guys, those were my five worst book plot twists and now we are moving on to the best five book plot twist, also tongue twist, I can't seem to say it right. Anyway, you'll notice that most books here aren't actually thrillers and I think that's what makes the twist more effective because you don't expect them. But anyway, let's get started and at number one we have the fact that the murderer is actually the long-lost brother of the detective from Child 44 by Tom Rob Smith. Since Tom Rob Smith also appeared in the previous part of the list, let's give him some credit because Child 44 was awesome. Now, if you haven't read this book, first of all, I'm sorry, I just spoiled it for you. It's a great book, but you also probably think, okay, come on, this plot twist sounds so cheesy. It's only a little less worth than the solution of the detective actually dreamed everything, it was only his head. But here is actually constructed really, really well. It's not just a coincidence that these two are brothers, it actually explains a lot of things. But what I like most about it is how it changes the entire way that you look at the first scene of the book. It occurs a few years earlier and it's about two brothers who seek out food in poverty-stricken USSR. And you think that it's either a way to show how bad the things were then or to show maybe the first killing, but it's actually about how everything really started and I think it was brilliant and Child 44 is just fantastic. At number two we have the fact that Aunt Helen was a very bad person from The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shposky. I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. So Perks of Being a Wallflower is about a high schooler called Charlie who is kind of socially awkward, something is kind of wrong with him but we can't put a finger on what exactly sort of a guy. And he deals with a lot of things like family and friends and crushes and um, being popular but especially the devastating effect that his Aunt Helen's death had on him. She was more than just a family member, she was a friend to him, she really loved him, he really loved her, they had a really strong connection and it's really really sad until at the end of the book when Charlie's crush Sam touches him in a bit of a sexual way, he has some sort of a flashback to the way Aunt Helen used to touch him because apparently she used to sexually abuse him for years. I don't tend to say it a lot but this actually blew me away. It came out of nowhere. This is why it is so effective. Like I said at the beginning, you really didn't expect that sort of a plot twist and it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh my god. At number three we have that everyone was actually connected from The Book of Speculation by Erica Swaler. This is another book that I reviewed. Once again, link is below, blah blah blah, go check it out. So The Book of Speculation have two timelines. One of them is in the present and the other is a few centuries back around a traveling circus and you know that these two are somehow connected. You know that maybe in the traveling circus one of the people there is the ancestor of Simon, the protagonist from the modern plotline and somehow everything is connected and at the ending you realize how everything is connected but it's even more connected than you think. This book I think has a more of an emotional effect other than something else. I mean, it's not just the plot, it's about the emotion and the thing that in the backgrounds and the meaning of things. This book is about faith and fate, among other things, and how our past or our future are kind of connected and some of it is sort of meant to be. So at the end, where things are more connected than you think, it's kind of give you a feeling of closure and catharsis. It's not just Simon who has an ancestor in a traveling circus. It's also his parents' best friend. It's also his friend who gave him the book about the circus. Everyone is actually connected. And while in other books that might have been really, really cheesy, I also mentioned that in my review of this book, in here it's portrayed in such a wonderful way. It's a wonderful twist and kind of makes you feel a little happier about things. And number four we have the fact that Bucky was actually Patient Zero from Nemesis by Philip Roth. Nemesis is actually the only book by Philip Roth that I've ever read, but it's very impactful and I'm really looking forward to read more books by him. 
It takes place during World War II in a New York neighborhood and its protagonist is a young man called Bucky who wanted to join the army and help the US fight the Nazis but unfortunately due to some medical issues he didn't got accepted to the army and had to stay back. He feels really guilty for not being able to join the army so instead he just looks after kids during the summer vacation make sure they'll be out of trouble but a new thread had come and this is the polio virus. More and more kids are getting sick each day and there's really a polio epidemic and Bucky throughout the book tries to find out who is the person who spreads this very dangerous virus. And at the end we find out the shocking truth that Bucky himself was some sort of a typhoid Mary. He was patient X, he had the polio virus without being affected himself and he gave this virus to so many kids. This entry isn't enough to show what a big impact this twist has on the plot and on Bucky. From being the person who protects the kids or wanting to protect the kids, he end up being the one who hurt them without even knowing it. And the whole title of the book, Nemesis, the meaning of it just changes completely. And we're down to the last one and this is the most ironic one, so I saved it for less. And at number five, we have the fact that the mother has been dead all along. Again, this time from Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. This is a beautiful coming-of-age story about 13-year-old Salamanca who is doing a road trip with her parents to meet her mother. And at the same time, they're having their adventures, but Salamanca also tells them the story of what happened to her in the past year. At the end of the book, she does reach her mother, but instead of greeting an actual person, she reaches her grave. I read this book when I was about 13 years old and this absolutely shocked me. I didn't see that coming. I doubt that as an adult, if I would have read that with me being more judgmental and sarcastic and being able to read more between the lines, I would still be, have been able to figure it out in the middle of the book. But nonetheless, this plot was just changes everything about what Salamanca thinks about her life and her family and her father and what's going to happen when she comes home to him. We always think that she's going to bring her mother back and her parents are going to be back together but this realization that she's dead and the realization that Salamanca knew all along that was no surprise to her. She knew that her mother was dead. This was just done in order to for her to feel a bit more closure. This really changes everything and makes things more sad but gives you some sort of feeling of catharsis because I don't want to give up too many things about the plot line but you know that it's impossible for her mother to come back. This is a beautiful coming of age story. It's constructed beautifully, told beautifully. It's an amazing book. So guys, those were my best five and worst five book plot twists. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't ruin too many books for you. And I want to thank you for daring to stay all the way until the end. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to click like and subs to subscribe to my channel if you dare and follow me on other social media. And of course, I want to know which books did I miss? Which ones were your favorite or least favorite book plot twist? Please comment in the comment section below and tell me what you think. And until next time, bye bye.